Hello and welcome to season two of Teacher Talk, the podcast for teachers who are lifers but still want to have a life. I'm Jared and as always I'm joined by my partner Johanna. Hey Johanna. Hi Jared. What are we going to talk about today? Managing technology in the classroom. Managing, how do you spell managing? M, man, <laughs> uh, we're off to a great start. <laughs> we are. Managing's kind of weird. We're technology is kind of a, a weird word too. Exciting adventure for those listening to Jerry yeah, take that, the time to write things down. Now they're, <laughs> they're gonna play along because they get to think about how it's spelled. It's, it's, oh, it's, we're making the podcast interactive. I got it. Got it. I got it now though. Yes. Managing technology in the classroom. Yes, yeah, specifically technology that's given to the students by the school. Okay. School issued technology. Yes. You, like, or maybe the school says they're supposed to bring it, whatever. Like, it is supposed to be in the classroom. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this isn't about contraband technology. This is about... Contraband the... technology. What world do you live in? It's contraband. In England, in several schools it is, yeah. But anyway, so this is school-issued or school-encouraged technology. Good. Okay. What do I need to know about that? Um. Well, how does that work in the business world? Like, I really, like, I'm curious. Do, like do cell people, phones? No. Like or your laptops? The, the technology that you're given in the business world, do people just know to not do their personal stuff on the work computer. I mean, no one really cares if you do some personal stuff on your work computer, but like all your keystrokes are logged and like IT could be looking at your screen at any time, theoretically. Like even to like buy something on Amazon, you know, you have to put in your password. They're probably not going to actually take your password and then like rip off your Amazon account. Got but it. like nothing is truly private. Right, the kids don't care so much, though, that that is told to them. Um, I mean, it, they're kind of like a herd. If they all make the same poor choices, it's it's too much my, to to like like sure one of them might go down, but the rest of them are safe as long as they run with the herd. If, if you were a poorly performing employee and they suspected it, that it was because you were dinking around on personal stuff too much. Your, your boss would have um, IT, like, spy on you for a, a time. Got it. And then they could demonstrate that while well, you're spending half your day not actually working, and then you could, you'd be, you'd probably lose your job over that. Got it. Okay. Well, first you'd have, like, a coaching and improvement plan, <laughs> and then if you still didn't, if you didn't get better, you'd, then you would um, yeah, so in the perfect world, that's what would happen in the school districts also. But so you have a way to enforce non-personal time. use. Yeah, Yeah, or resources. Your one IT guy for the entire and district the, can't. Okay, we're dealing with children who don't have like fully developed prefrontal cortexes. So like even if you lay out for them, like these are the truths. And... You're, you're having to make a, a now decision to avoid a later consequence. Yeah. It's hard for... Yeah, it's I hard mean, for people generally, but especially for kids. They spend a lot of time working very carefully to figure out how to get around all the firewalls. <laughs> like, yeah, they're crafty. Okay, so so now that we've identified a clear problem, shall we talk about solutions? Which is personal use. Um, so it becomes a distraction. The, the anything, I mean. The YouTube, the watching the videos, the recording the videos, the recording the classroom. I like that you just called um, it the YouTube. Yeah. The games. You want the, don't want them on the YouTube or the Facebook. They don't do the Facebook. They Their grandma does the Facebook. Oh. They don't even do the Twitter. Okay. That's, they, that's good to know, I think. Yeah, that's for the old people. Right. Just as like I go uh, do something in my brokerage account. <laughs> What reference you just made? <laughs> what is that? A brokerage account? Yes. It's where you put your money that you invest in, in oh, yeah, stocks yeah, yeah. and other investments. Okay. That's what I thought it was. I thought you were talking about some new fancy pants. As very rich, successful thing. people as we clearly are, <laughs> you know exactly what that is. Oh, yeah. I do. Uh-huh. Yep. 
I'm told that banks are a place that where poor people put money that's not properly invested. So theft from bank is tantamount to that most grievous of crimes, theft of money. I don't even know. It's a Futurama joke. Oh, okay. So I the, have to say... The judge is so I, rich he doesn't understand that even what banks are for because his money is in like investments and stuff. I used to cut out a lot of your references because I didn't get them, and then lately I've been leaving them in, and you've been getting positive feedback. Well, good. <laughs> so even though I have no clue what joke you just made, I'll leave it in there because it's entertaining other people. <laughs> I should probably get out there more or remember things I've seen. Anyway, back to the classroom. You want to ask? The YouTube. You want to ask about solution? I mean, yeah. do you need do you need to know so the, what the I kids mean, are doing? The problem there? is, if you put the the toy in front of them, it's all of the internet. Yeah, they will. You name it, they're curious. I mean, even if it's something that's like actually on topic, I know, like something is anyway, referenced. Yeah, okay. It, it's it's the it's not that they're watching like true death videos or something that you're getting in trouble for letting them watch. It, it's um, you're, they're just, it's not learning, right? It's analogous to the, to the business problem. Yes. Yeah. They're just distracted. Right. Okay. So right. how do you, how do you keep a lid on that? Okay. So the first key is that normally in a classroom, right? We were taught that you have students face you so that you can tell that they're engaged. Students face you engaged. Got it. Yes. But when you have technology in your classroom, you want the screen to face you. Oh, clever. Yes. This can be very challenging in classrooms where they like have put together computer labs and all the people that did computer labs like somehow don't know this. And so there are seats that the screens don't face you. So you have to get very creative. Like I've taught in computer labs where I had to like, it was worth my time and energy. To turn the whole thing around? To spend time figuring out how I could jury rig. And then, cause a lot of times you're like not supposed to like touch or move the computers. And dude, I don't have time to ask for permission and get permission and explain why it's best teaching practice. Fairies just came in and moved the computers. I don't know. I just found it like this. <laughs> like, like it's worth, you will, the decrease in behavior problems so a, a it's worth it. jury rigged. Jury? Not, You've been corrected jury. me on this before. I, people say it both ways. I looked it up once. It's, okay. It's jury because it's like injury and it goes back to like sailing jury. days. Okay. I got to say it like jury rigged. Yeah. Got it. Uh, it's like a trial. You fairies? What? That's why I say when things magically happen in my classroom that I'm not supposed to Meaning do. Meaning you did something you weren't supposed to. Uh-huh. And move something yourself. Or painted something instead of asking permission or to, put a nail in the wall and then never had it done yeah i, God, didn't okay. do, I don't know fairies i it's, just came in it was like that fairies is your forgiveness not permission thing yep. okay it's worked every time i've done all sorts of stuff and making a joke and the principal's like what happened here and i'm like i don't know because they don't care enough to some fairies just must i came in and all of a sudden it was like like this. Yeah, they don't care enough to do the work through the, the normal paperwork e process. So they also don't care if it just happens. Yes. Certain things are like that. Got it. Yes. And I've done, I've done some serious so your, things. So your advice is to violate the that. rules. <laughs> Got it. Well, and most of the time, they don't even notice because they're not in my classroom enough to notice. Yeah. There was one time I got caught actively painting on a ladder that I wasn't supposed to be standing on. <laughs> and I think I was pregnant, but still didn't get in trouble. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so criminal podcast. <clears throat> but you know, the, the screen thing, I can see why that's yeah, super important because you it, it, that changes things in a big way. Completely. You either, the simple solution is to just physically train the students to take their chair and put it on the other side of the desk whenever they want to use their technology. So um, if you have kids in pods, this can be harder. Like I train kids, I put tape on the floor, electrical tape 
um, works great on like tile floors because it doesn't leave a residue. Double check your tile floor to make sure that's true, disclaimer. But um, you can have multiple seating charts. You just retake the floor. Uh, for young students, I just have the rule that we don't do our Chromebooks anywhere except on my mat, like when I'm giving whole group instruction. And they still face the screen, but then I just stand behind my students so that I can see their computer screens. And it that alone will solve like, like 90? 90. 90 I was in fact going to say 90. All right. 90%. If you magically have... Um, like some schools, you have technology that lets you see the kids' computer screens, but it's like you don't have time to sit there in front and just watch. The... Instead, I project that on the big screen. So on the big screen, I'll have like the the programs let you see every little every kid's screen as like a as like a little micro mm-hmm. like thirty little yeah. micro things, and I just project it on the screen because the kids will police themselves. Like, they will call each other out. You turned them on to little narcs. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, well, also, that's a little trick that really helps because then you can see, like, which kids are way behind also. Like, particularly if you're doing something like writing a paper. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a That's nice. Like, okay. to do. Seating. Make sure you are seeing the actual screens. Um, then... You have to have pre-communicated and posted a plan for how you're going to respond if they misuse the technology. Well, that's that's your general rule always, though, right? Yes. And to be fair, as I say this, I currently don't have one posted in my classroom. I have to write it out each time because I'm like, why haven't I made this poster yet? But make sure it gets posted. All my kids, though, could tell you the rules. Um, And then I have this separate from behavior. I actually have it stricter because I find that a stricter technology plan works better than a lenient one. And how is this more strict? So I don't give warnings for technology. What's the consequence? In my classroom, if they are caught not following the technology expectations, then the next three days, they don't get any technology in the room. So it's not the same discipline plan either, right? Like your normal like morning consequence stuff. You just it, it's specific to you, the technology. It's more immediate. It's more severe. Yep, and but we, it's but it's limited to the to the technology. Yep. Okay. Yep. I keep it in a separate category because it's more like putting your hand in the cookie jar. Mm-hmm. Like you can choose to not put your hand in the cookie jar, but you're always going to want to. So you have to, if there's like a warning system, you're like, well, I got a warning, but I also got okay. a cookie. Yeah. So you need it to be like slap on the hand, not actual slap on the hand, but you need there to be a, a firm response. I mean, it could be if your if your school allows that. No, don't do that, Jared. Come on now. Who okay, are, who so, are we to judge? <laughs> stop. Okay. Okay, so, um, and then I also train students, like, if another kid says to you, Jared, you're not doing what you're supposed to, that we practice, like, saying, uh, and I jokingly say, like, thank you, friend, because if your friend catches you, you get a warning, right? Like your friend is warning you. If I catch you, it's immediate consequence. Now, as teachers, we know we're going to overhear that warning that someone gave and we're not going to immediately respond. But like in a minute, like then you respond. This helps you encourage people to be narcs. Peer pressure. Positive peer pressure. Because they're not, in a way, they're kind of helping by helping them avoid the worst consequence. Right, a kid, I'm not going to issue a consequence if you tell me, Jared's doing what he's not supposed to on his Chromebook. No dice. Mm-hmm. But if I catch you, it's three days, no Chromebook. Yeah, which helps me want to narc and put up with narking more because yeah. it's, it's, bad. It's, it's not the same punishment. Yeah. Now, the second time ever 
So not the second time at class time, not the second time that week. I do it by quarters because that's just the way I live or trimesters or whatever it is. But the second time you put your hand in that cookie jar, no more technology in the classroom. For the rest of the period? Or like... like Quarter, yeah. Yeah, whatever that... I don't make it a whole semester, but I'm firm. Are you allowed to do this? I don't ask. Okay. I don't ask. Now, as soon as I remove technology from a student, I am now obligated to print them everything, right? Wah, wah, wah. Yes. So when, I'll tell you, it's really rare. In fact, I'm trying to think of a time. I, I think I had one student once where we actually had to do this. Um, elementary, it happens more often, but... It's also easier for me to have a student live without technology. Um, And then I have the side rule (laughs) that I can, like, if a kid really needs a computer, then I, as the teacher, have permission to say, like, Jared, today you get to have your Chromebook. You need to go back to your locker and get it. You can grant a... Waiver. Uh, yeah, what do you call it? When you, like, let Willie Horton out of prison for a weekend? Yeah. But if if this isn't a good rule for you, maybe your rule is the second time they have... A furlough. Time. Furlough, You yeah. have a furlough? I can grant a furlough. I don't advertise that to the kids. I just... That's just, like, when it's When it's particularly crucial. Yes. Here's your... Here's We're taking the final, you need your Chromebook, go get it. Let's say I've had schools where kids are supposed to keep it with them the whole time. Then I have particular shelving that they can put it in. Or if I'm not allowed to take it away, which happens in some schools, then instead maybe what I have is isolated special seating. Whenever they have to use their Chromebook, they have to go sit in that particular seat. This is not like you're reteaching behavior. This is more hand in the cookie jar. Yeah. Yeah. And you find that that immediate three day thing, it's it's a pretty good burnt hand lesson yeah. that oh. they don't really need the second, right? Yeah. Now I will say, when we do this rule, I give a grace period and I announce it as a grace period, where because I have all sorts of things like I have rules about Chromebooks can't be open during this period of time and I have rules that Chromebooks can't be used in this area of the classroom and I have rules like if they go out in the hall because the internet works better in the hall they have to be a whole person length away so so there's a grace period where kids learn those rules and if they break those rules I'm like oh that would have been a three days no Chromebook violation so, so that they've, pr- I know that they know what to do and it's really practiced. And then I say, okay, training wheels coming off. This is it. Yeah. And if I have new students move in, you got to let them have the same grace period. Got okay. it. Yes. Okay. I feel much more confident about students not using technology for personal stuff in my classroom now. These seem like good ideas. Okay. We've got a little bit more. What else, what else do I need to know? Uh, I would make sure you have a zone in the classroom where technology goes when it's not needed. So like the off zone. Yes. Um, This is very common for elementary teachers to do, and it's not common for secondary teachers to do. And it's a lot of times it is too tempting to have that Chromebook or that iPad or whatever the computer, whatever technology they're allowed out particularly if they're doing like hard stuff in class, like, ugh, right? I'd rather sneak into my technology. And so if you have a place where their technology can go in the classroom when it's not needed, that also will help decrease. And like like cubbies or like a pile or how do you, how do you actually do that? Uh, it depends whether they have a case or not. And it depends whether all their cases look exactly the same. <laughs> So um, I'm a big advocate of helping the students know how to put identification or toggles on their cases so that they can tell which case is easily theirs for somebody else's. And I think bookshelves work really well. Um, 
You can even buy those really cheap like magazine holders and depending on the technology and the size of it and then you can number those and those can go on a bookshelf and then it's really easy to see whose is what. Um, if it's, I mean, there's Pinterest is full of ideas. Okay. Okay. I know how to use Pinterest kind of. Do teachers know how to I click on one picture and then I get mad because <laughs> I can't click on anything else. Without signing up for Pinterest? I think this is like the third or fourth Pinterest rant we have had. I don't like Pinterest. You could just get a Pinterest account and then it would do that I don't want to. Okay. Well. What else, uh, what else I need to do? That, that makes total sense though because it's just like if you have your cell phone not in your pocket, it's easy to not use. Yeah. And but if I, it's in your pocket, it's impossible to not use. And I don't actually contact parents about this one. Like this is a school issued electronic from the parent's perspective, like, you can get an earful. The parent might not even want them to have this technology. Like, this is a school-created problem. The t- the parent literally has no way, because the kid can talk as much as they want about how they're not going to do it incorrectly. And then it's going to be right in front of them, and they're going to be like, meh. <laughs> so, I just don't. I don't involve parents on it. I just... This is between the student and I. This is, that's kind of my take. I don't know. You think people complained about like slates at one point? To be like, when Probably I when I learned had, math, I did it in my head like you're supposed to. I, I didn't, well, I didn't write to, this thing down on a chalk slate. They had to buy it and they had to supply it. And then like, you know, now we don't, a lot of schools, you're not supposed to charge your Chromebook at school, you're supposed to charge it at home, and the kid has to remember to plug it in, and then they got to worry about siblings getting into the Chromebook or the computer or what. It's just, I don't think it's a good road to go down because if you're having issues with the student misusing the technology, what do you think's happening at home? Yeah. Like, okay, the last thing I'm going to say is there are some top mistakes that teachers make. Um, when it comes to school provided technology, you won't believe number three. Is this number three? I don't think what, so. No, no, it's a, you're making it's, it. It's a <laughs> okay. It's when you want people to click on your <laughs> your internet links, you do like top ten lists and then say you won't believe number six. Got it. Okay, so they use technology as a reward or a break. Okay, yeah, that sounds bad. Yep, huge mistake. Why? Because... Like, I think I already kind of, like, I couldn't tell you why, but from listening to you on other stuff, I guess, oh, that's that's obviously not the right thing. I just, I can't explicate exactly the reason why. Okay, so let's go back to the cookie analogy. So, Jared, I'm supposed to be teaching you, like, if technology is a cookie, and if learning in the classroom is like fruits and vegetables and i say to you well you gotta eat all your fruits and vegetables and then you can have a cookie well that sounds fair but if the cookies are in a glass jar and there's like 40 of them and the kid gets to take one cookie out and they eat that one cookie how excited are they going to be to go back to the fruits and vegetables it creates its own problem like if the kid struggles to focus in on the learning, if the kid struggles with grit, if the kid struggles with making the right choices at the right time, the last thing you should do is provide them a thing that's super hard to quit. And if they're addicted technology, if technology is used as how they are occupied at home, they're going to lash out when you take that technology away and you're going to create more problems. You're gonna, Instead, you're going to have to placate them and you're going to have to say things like, well, no, no, you go work for 10 more minutes and then you get another break. Yeah, I don't like the sound of this. If you remove it as an option and provide things like fun, interactive experiences, the kids will like that better. Like, st- you, you breaks don't want are your important. you don't want your rewards for eating to be eating based. Yes, that's that really distracts from the like eating your 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 vegetables. Yes, even though we actually kind of do that. In normal life, the the analogy makes sense, but it's strained in some ways because we say, well, if you finish, if you clean your plate, you can have dessert. 
But yeah, see, I that's probably that, actually a bad idea. A bad, I don't think that's a good idea. Like, but it's, that's, that's with, a terrible idea, actually. With, with the technology here, it's definitely a bad idea because, yeah, it just makes it harder to eat um, the vegetables to do the learning when you've got a clear glass cookie jar. Yeah, yeah. you got to train them to a replacement behavior that's a positive replacement behavior. If you have a student who struggles with, like, Otherwise, they're Fidgeting incentive. and getting distracted, then Play-Doh is a fantastic option. and Or um, like a fidget spinner is a fantastic option. Or if you have a kid who can't sit still because they have so much energy, a break that lets them do something physical is a much better option. The replacement activity should be fun and engaging and something the student picks that also would be a positive, exciting thing for them to pick naturally when they have free time. We won't, don't want kids to have free time and naturally say, well, I'm going to play a video game. Or, you know, like... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes okay. sense. And I feel bad because there's... That's used... It's very effective. That's the problem. Yeah, so it's crack. Yeah, I guess so. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So, so are cigarettes. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yes. Yeah. So it's just be a little resourceful and a little daring and let the kid experiment and try out different break options. I'm a huge advocate for breaks. I think it's a great way to help teach positive coping skills. Okay, yeah. Jared, you're going to recap us? Is that, you, you, That's you, it. You said top mistakes, I thought. Is that just top mistake? Oh, yeah, I meant top mistake. Top mistake. Top Got mistake. That's a good one. Yes, and it will be written. I have seen it written into IEPs. So you can't, if the IEP says that's what you're doing, then that's what you're doing. But then you need to, like, document what happens and work to get that changed or something. Because that's not good. I think in a couple of years it will be rare that they use that. But IEPs, I agree. No, IEPs are good. Oh. Uh, putting technology as the reward Got it. in the IEP. Um, managing school issued technology in the classroom. Um, you're, you're in, in traditional class land, you've got rows of desks and columns facing you at your lectern so that you can see their faces and see how engaged they are, right? Yeah, the traditional model, yep. But that's not what you want. Because you, what you need is to be able to see their screens. Yeah. So you want to turn the classroom around or you want to train the the, the kids that when it's technology time that they put their, their chair on the other side of the desk to use their technology or you have like a technology use area where yeah. they all set in a place where then you can monitor it if you from where you're standing. If you have kids in pods, you, ha- you train them as a game to create rows and if you put some sort of marker, ooh, if you have carpet, the secret is you can buy colored Velcro that sticks to the carpet. And and that is how, so the kids will know where to move their desk to when it's like technology time. Sure. And you need to be able to see the screens. Or tape that doesn't ruin the tile. Yes. Got it. Okay. Uh, if you've got like monitoring software, you're not just going to sit there and stare at that. Put it on the big screen. And then everyone can see it. And yeah. then they'll all know that everyone can see them. And then the little narc kids can help monitor it for you. Because um, you're going to help encourage them to narc in the next no, session. No, or, or because the kids know everyone can see their screen. They just choose well, to do what they're supposed to. Yeah, both. <laughs> um, you have a stricter technology consequence plan. Just like your normal philosophy is that, like... Um, Rules aren't really decisions. They're just consequences. Like, you don't want to get into an argument over whether or not uh, you're, the teacher is choosing to punish you here. There's just there's not choice. The, right. co- the consequence for um, uh, personal use of Internet, uh, the technology, is immediately it goes away for three days. Yep. And then you get it back. And then the consequence for the second time is it's gone for the rest of the quarter or trimester. Yep. Um, 
if that doesn't work for you, create a different system. But the, the strict one works for me because they don't want to have no technology for an entire quarter. The uh, things that soften this a little bit is your narcs um, don't actually engage a punishment, right? Yep. No, they can't tattle. It doesn't work. But obviously you're going to overhear them. It doesn't matter if, if, a, if a friend catches them. Yep. A friend. Friend. Uh, if a friend uh, tells them that, hey, you're doing the bad, you're going to get in trouble, uh, then there is no, they just have to stop. It's only if you catch them yep. that they actually get the punishment engaged. Uh, you also have a grace period where people are still getting used to the the, the expectations for using the technology uh, where you say, well, this is what would have happened. Yep. Which is kind of like the warning, but once the period's done, there, you, there's no warning. Yeah, once you're sure that they they have practiced enough to know what will happen and how severe that will feel. Yep. And then, um, you, when it's really necessary, someone who's had their technology suspended, you you can furlough them, which is another hard word to spell. Uh, and and say okay don't I, I didn't tell you this ahead of time but today i'm going to let you use technology yep um if you can't suspend their technology because of rules then like an alternative is to set up like a like an isolation area yep to avoid just constant execution of your taking technology away law it's necessary to have a zone where the technology goes where it's not ne- when it's not needed. Correct. Um, otherwise, everyone is doomed. Yeah, even when it's only for five minutes, my kids are trained. Like that's where their technology goes. And you say like a bookshelf with like markers. It, whatever makes logical sense. If you have a thing under your chair, or there's their desks have spots under them. Whatever makes sense. And then don't make the mistake of letting using the technology in the way that they're not supposed to be the reward for using it the way that they're yeah, supposed to or like a whole class reward. Like, no, just don't, don't, do don't, don't, don't put a cookie on the plate. Nope. And then tell them not to eat the cookie. Yep. Nope. Don't do it. You'll just, then it's so much harder to stick to everything else. Got because, it. Yeah. That makes sense to me. All right. Well, thank you, Johanna. Thank you, Jared. Johanna, do you get questions from listeners ever? Yes, we do. How do those listeners send you questions? They send us an email. Where does that email go? Teacher talk for teachers at gmail.com. But wait, what kind of four? How do I do four? All of the fours. They can do a number four. They can write the word F-O-R or they can do F-O-U-R, even though that one doesn't quite make sense. Well, perfect. Teacher talk for teachers at gmail.com. Yes. Thank you, Johanna. Thank you, Jared. Teacher Talk, the podcast for teachers who are lifers but still want to have a life.